Eyewitness News. This is Breaking News. We begin with some breaking news out of southwest Bakersfield where an officer was involved in a shooting. This happened just around 7.50 p.m. on Ming Avenue and Manning Street. The Bakersfield Police Department say officers responded to reports of an officer involved shooting where the suspect was hit. Police say no officers were injured and that medical services were provided at the time for the suspect. No word on the suspect's condition. The area is closed as officers conduct an investigation. We'll be sure to bring you any developments as we learn them. You can check for updates on air or online at bakersfieldnow.com. Now at 11, Thanksgiving Day weekend is finally wrapping up for many of us, and with that comes traffic. Here is a live look at LAX where it is showing that holiday traffic at this hour. Um, as you can see, it's kind of calmed down earlier. It was really, really backed up, but thankfully it looks to kind of have cleared up in LAX. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Lena Folk. Today, millions of Americans made a dash for home after the long Thanksgiving weekend. For flyers, the sky was a busy place. An estimated 30 million passengers flew over a 10-day span. CBS's Elise Preston is at LAX with more. Frustrated flyers are up against long lines and packed planes in what could be the busiest travel day ever. I just want to go home. A record 2.9 million passengers are expected to go through U.S. airports, prompting many to plan ahead. You're several hours early. Uh, yeah, because we didn't know it was going to be packed until Thanksgiving. Snow and rain will slow some of those travelers. Andy Fitch watched Chicago weather alerts all day. Apparently, it's been snowing all morning, so we're here early so that we can get back and find out what's going on. Hopefully, nothing gets delayed. If it's delayed, what is that going to do for you heading to work tomorrow? I mean, I think I'll just have to skip out on some sleep. Also facing a bumpy ride, drivers. With about 49 million people expected to hit the road this holiday period, Experts predict traffic jams across the country. Some Americans are hoping to avoid the crowds by driving or flying Monday, but they still could face the same travel headaches. Elise Preston, CBS News, Los Angeles. And looking to our weather right now, we are currently at a temperature of 46 degrees, so it has gotten cooler these last few hours. And we are still at that freeze warning that is lasting up until Thursday at around 8 a.m. in parts of the South Valley. So if you are in Delano or Wasco or even in parts of the desert, keep that in mind as we go throughout the week. And our current temperature is slightly cooler around the mountains in Tehachapi and Gorman, warmer in San Luis Obispo at 50 degrees. And this is our temperature difference for the past 24 hours. Um, it looks relatively consistent. Um, we're one degree warmer than we were yesterday, um, so not too much. And then as we go through our hour by hour temperatures in the South Valley, we're going to see temperatures dip to the mid 40s and rise back up into the 50s at around 10 a.m. And then in the mountains, we are looking at temperatures dropping to the 30s and then going back into the 50s at around noon. And in the Kern River Valley, we are seeing temperatures drop to the high 30s at around 3 a.m., but then spike back up at around noon in the high 50s. But we'll talk about that a little later on. Have you seen this missing 48-year-old? The Bakersfield Police Department is looking for Susanna Ambers, an unhoused woman who frequents the area of Stockdale Highway and Real Road. She was heard from last night. She's considered at risk due to possibly being the victim of an assault. Police describe her as 5'5", five 160 pounds with red hair and hazel eyes. Anyone with information is asked to call police. A reminder for those of you who hosted Thanksgiving meals this week, the city of Bakersfield wants to help you dispose of all that cooking grease. The city is holding its holiday grease collection event starting tomorrow. People can drop off used cooking oil and grease Monday through Friday until January 5th at two locations, the wastewater treatment plant on McCutcheon Road and the north of the River Sanitary District main office on Universe Avenue. Christmas isn't the same without a tree, and for many, getting a real tree is part of the holiday experience. Eyewitness News reporter Mary Peronian went to a local Christmas tree lot to hear what the tradition is all about. 
Now that Thanksgiving is over, families are jumping into the holiday spirit by preparing their Christmas decorations. That, of course, includes picking up their fresh Christmas trees. Nothing says Christmas more than a freshly cut tree. Tied up and ready to be taken home, families got a head start on Sunday as they searched for the one. Alpine Christmas Trees is celebrating their 40th anniversary, and their workers have been working tirelessly to prepare them for delivery and pickup. Owner Chris Moradic said an average tree takes 8 to 10 years to grow. He said most of the trees they have were planted in the early 2000s. Now, they're about 23 years old. Our tree farms are between Eugene and Corvallis in Oregon and the Western Mountains. And we, I've been in the tree business 46 years and I've been growing trees for 38. This year, he says they're going to have about 46,000 trees brought into Bakersfield, which is much less from previous years. There is a tree shortage and that's a real deal. So we're a little bit short. I would say if people want to get in and buy a tree, I'm thinking we're going to sell out maybe the 8th or 9th. So I would say get in in the next week or so and get a, a nice fresh tree because we're shipping every day. According to the American Christmas Tree Association, the average cost of a real tree was $46, whereas an artificial cost $78. Moradic said they raised their prices less than 10%. On some of our trees, we've kept the same prices as last year, and some we just had to go up, some of our big trees especially. But that didn't stop people from coming in to buy theirs. People I spoke to said they prefer real trees rather than artificial ones. It's very, very nice when you wake up in the morning and you can smell the freshness of the tree and just the Christmas, you know, Christmas all around. It's just really nice. We love it. Do you like Christmas trees? Yeah? <laughs> I'd say a real one because um, the smell of it is also good. The real one, you can't beat it because of the smell and just the whole overall feeling of Christmas. Moradic said their location on Weibull is the original one, but they have a total of five locations throughout town. And for more information on where they are located, you can head on over to our website, bakersfieldnow.com. Reporting in Bakersfield, Mary Pronian, Eyewitness News. Now to the Southland, where an Orange County jogger filmed himself allegedly killing a homeless man who was blocking his path. Garden Grove police say 68-year-old Craig Elliott was walking his two dogs in September when he came across Antonio Garcia Avalos sleeping on the sidewalk. Elliott recorded the whole confrontation. In the video, Avalos got up, started yelling, and threw a shoe at Elliott after the 68-year-old nudged him with a cart. That's when Elliott reportedly fired three shots at Avalos, who later died. Elliott was released on a $100,000 bail. He is scheduled to be arraigned December 15th and faces a maximum sentence of 21 years in state prison. He was simply in his own neighborhood going to his home, and as he was going to his home, he was profiled, he was targeted, and these sheriff deputies in East Los Angeles went after him. Cell phone video showing the violent arrest of an amputee is sparking outrage. An L.A. County deputy can be seen repeatedly punching a man in the face while another deputy holds him down. It all happened after the suspect, who has one of his legs amputated, was recognized by deputies as an active gang member. They also say he was trying to conceal something. Deputies found a gun in his waistband. That's when the suspect reportedly resisted arrest. The suspect's attorney confirms his client was carrying a gun and doesn't know if he had a permit. Coming up here on Eyewitness News at 11, health officials issue a warning for Americans traveling to China. A look at a new respiratory virus sweeping across. Plus this. Another group of hostages released by Hamas, including one American. But what about the others? I'm Christine Frizzell with a look at the delicate negotiations and the days ahead.